whatever mountains come in your way forward still yeah 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 whatever if you walk out to walk forward still yeah 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 disappointment come forward still yeah 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 woo and if another pastor fall forward still after another pastor we are follow we are being with pastor but we are follow Jesus forward still Young people, walk holy, walk holy, make the right decisions, walk right, walk holy, Ramadosia, Rakanda Rabasi on the Ramosha, walk holy, forward sail, it's Jehovah's will, though the below. a family member that needs care? Do you have a family member that needs protection? Call us today at Heart to Heart Home Nursing Home located in Portmore, Jamaica. We specialize in home care and we do everything nursing. Call 1-876-465-4063 1-876-465 4063 that is heart to heart nursing home dr brown's arthritis remedy and joint oil pain relieves arthritis pain muscle and joint pain sciatica and foot pain and headaches and menstrual cramps and is also a great sleep aid manufactured by Jamaican scientist Everton Brown PhD and is made with a blend of Jamaican herbs. We ship worldwide jamsweet.com you can make your purchases and start getting relief from pain. Yo, get your strip. You know, it's a quote in this, a.k.a. Scantilever Boss. Along with my high dream, them, Star King, high grade, presents Trainer One Earth Day celebration. You know, the 30th of the month called March. You know, right at Poppy, you know, at Tavern Day. You know, right at the community center. Music by DJ Platinum, DJ Kelly, One Sky Views. You know, there's some come down, and they go wicked, and they go bad, you know, there's some come in. Admission free. Add it up now. We've been listening to you. We definitely been listening to you. So we got to do this just for you. It's Pain House Record presents the man himself, Redeem, talking about one of the baddest, one of the best uprising artists right now. Keys for the Cage Mind. With songs like Deception. Peculiar people. Every morning when we rise up, don't the river will a swim. If you do not have no river, find yourself down at the spring. And your ear know what it all before you. And a brand new single. This one's called This Is Too Redeem Much. Say no more, this too much. Hey, redeem say no more, this too much. Poverty lie in the long bend till you walk. We garrison here, we are them who are fix up. Talking about Redeem, one of the fastest rising artists right now. Hey, you can find him on all all social media platform IG Facebook TikTok it's redeem official or look him up right here on YouTube it's redeem official vivo hey talking about good music talking about authentic music 
It's right here. It's redeemed. It's a paid house production. Why you want white us from Jaja Earth? But for whatever lies worth. Hey, Babylon, I have seen you hurt. Babylon, me see your dirty work. Babylon, redeem, still see you hurt. Who no say who no? Good night, Jamaica. Good night to the diaspora. Good night to everyone. I want to say a special happy birthday to Uncle Barry. That's Auntie Claudette's husband. That's Auntie Claudette's husband. Right? Happy birthday to Uncle Barry. Why everybody around me born at them time? I quote me Barry this that rate. I mean, I have so much birthday present for everybody. We just can't sell everybody a beloved happy birthday, don't it? So a happy birthday to you all. So Uncle Barry, big up yourself. That's an Auntie Claudette husband. Don't say Uncle Barry, big up in yourself. So happy birthday, Uncle Barry. Happy birthday to Uncle Barry. Yes, man, today is his birthday. Yeah. I'm big up to my friend Sandy when we meet yesterday. I wish we meet Sandy again. But the, I want me to go yesterday. I go somewhere yesterday. And the people them just give me, I, I think. I did there somewhere yesterday. Oh, but KFC, I go buy one KFC. And Sandy Data comes say, And Sandy Data take up the, the phone. And say, Mama, see a man there in the KFC. <laughs> yes, big up yourself, Mama Sa Sandy. And big up to everybody. They must say me look too white. I do it no man Jamaica cool me cool like a cake soap. And a wipe me white and a filter me filter. Cool me cool like a cake soap. So I'm here tonight, Jamaica. And how is your Easter preparation going? Have you bought up a lot of fish and what you call it again? Bone? Nobody not really, nobody not really a buy no whole heap of bun. Time to one. Nobody not buy no whole heap of bun. Hmm? When we look at me see in the supermarket, can you bun them? You know, one time you go in a supermarket, you just see people around the Maxfield bun and I which bun eat nice? HTB. No, sir, HTB bun too dry. HTB bun too dry, you know? And a HTB me. Me love. I would have bun the name again. Maxfield Easter bun. Yeah. And them say the carnation bun nice too. But me not really like it because it have been too much fruits. The carnation bun full of too much fruits. Me can't take it. Me love the Maxfield Easter bun. I know the funny thing, no now no students all overseas that even say, I oh teacher do film Easter. Let me send him a, a little bun and cheese or one fish thing. You understand? Uno students overseas, you see. Uno no look out for the teacher me there every night to make sure so no learn and know what go on in Jamaica. You understand? The them get Russian with them teacher, I see. One time I'll know Easter, everybody send teachers some no uno students. Me, 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 me feel a weird man. Oh God. <coughs> Send what me and say. I ain't know what I'm going on. Me and say the labor right them and give up the bun them in the green box. <laughs> yes, man. Me and say the labor right them and give up the bun them in the green box with the MP face funny. 
Any of them get any of the bond them with the green face. Send me the picture of them. Anyone of them get the bond them with the green face. Send me the picture of them. All right. Me and so them give out the bond them Courtney and them a give a peg of cheese. Them not give the round cheese, you know. Them a give peg of cheese. Mm. Mm. So if you send the teacher one bun or send the teacher one little dividends, man. Bless up on the teacher and make on the teacher no son. Students, I don't feel like you appreciate me no more. One time, you know that look out for me, left, right, and center. But things, what somebody said, things get tight. But you don't look out for the teacher well-being too. Yes, man. Who no feel look out for a nice, clean teacher? Time come. Remember, I said, go back PMP and labor right now. Look out for me. See, I'm a student in the diaspora. I must look out for me. All right? What is a peg of cheese? Quarter cheese. Mm. Them oh, now get the whole of cheese. And them get the small cheese. We're coming at the little round tin. Like we're quarter pound of cheese. Yes, man. Me deserve a good partner draft from all around. So I don't look out for the teacher and say, teacher, see one nice Easter celebration here, don't it? Mm -hmm. But me still appreciate all around. Good, bad, and the different, the bad mind one, them the good one, them everybody. You know what I've been doing to the students? Today I took the time out to investigate. Say investigate. Yes, man. Today I took the time out to investigate. What did I investigate? Remember last night I played a video where they're saying Christopher own funeral home. You remember we're talking about it? Mm -hmm. So I went on an investigative work to find out if Christopher owned a funeral home. But before I did that, I went on a mission to find out who has the contract with KPH, UA Hospital, and Spanish Town Hospital. You hear what I said? I went on a mission to find out Jamaica. Who has the contract for the dead people? You hear what I said, students? I went and I found out who has the contract with the dead people. You understand, Courtney? I went on a fact-finding mission, students. You know what I'm to show any evidence of fine students? So I gathered that the company is a recent company. The company was formed a year before COVID. Yeah, you what I said to you, students? The thank you, Mama Stella. The company was formed one year before COVID came to Jamaica. Hey. So the company is 2018, was formed in 2018. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, students, you know your professor goes and find the information.
what is the relationship of Archer to Christopher? Hey, Lord God. <laughs> so I said to myself, what is the relationship of Michael Archer to Christopher? Michael Archer was the, is the recent winning candidate. In the constituency of Christopher. See him there. See him there, Jamaica. Tell me if this right. Hey. So Michael Archer, Jamaica. See him there on the picture. See him there. A counselor. A counselor. In Christopher's constituency. So not only is a counselor, but he's a contractor to the government of Jamaica. You hear that, Jamaica? He's not only a counselor where he get the five point ad million a year. He might get triple or quadruple that time there to collect dead body a year time from the government. You know? So I want to ask you tonight now, Jamaica. They never hear. Students, let me clarify again. The man on the screen with the mic is Michael Archer. He's a he owns a funeral home in Spanish town called Archer's Funeral Home. It is be said that he's the one that has the contract. He's the one that has the contracts to collect the dead body from the people at UWE, KPH, and Spanish Town Hospital. So the dead bodies go to his funeral home in Spanish Town. Mr. Archer is one of Christopher counselors. So not only is Mr. Archer Go back, go to the document again. So see, dear Jamaica, Mr. Archer is what I'm to make everything shut down. Hold a second, Jamaica. Yes, Jamaica, as I was saying to you, if you look through the documents, this is from the company's office of Jamaica. Mr. Archer and his wife are directors of this company. Archer's funeral home. When you get that? If you get that, say yes, you get that. Who get that? Say yes. Mm. Lord Jesus. Wanna get that information? Them get that right? All right. So there is Mr. Archer, who is the director. Why are you calling me? Hello, good night. Also Mandeville Andre, also in Mandeville. Mandeville deaths go to Archer too. So all the dead in a Mandeville go to Archer's funeral? What? Yes, yes. What? You said the dead in a Mandeville, so that means they all in a Clarendon then too? Because Mandeville they in a distance. You have to ask, Lord Jesus, what a bangarang we are revealed, unveiling tonight. So, Mr. Archer and his wife are the directors, and where is something called where they put up the company? If you go and company's officer Jamaica, go research it. Archer's funeral home and supplies. You understand, Jamaica? The company was formed 2018. So I like said the company about long time. 
Hello, good night. Good night, Andre. And all the autopsies are being done there too. The autopsies are done at Archers? On Young Street in Spanish Town. Really? Yes. Lord Jesus. So Young Street in Spanish Town? Yes. Thank you for that information, Carla. So what I want to ask now, isn't this a major conflict of interest that a council of government, a councillor to the Minister of Health, is getting the funeral contract? Lord Jesus. You know, so it can't continue, sir. So. If this can't continue in this country, this country, sir. So. It cannot continue in this country, sir. So. Let me say it again, Jamaica. It cannot continue in the country like this thank you janet it yes carla what are you saying um uh, teacher yes no wonder the hospital them is now now they now have to the hospital well it's a conflict of interest to know that is the minister and the minister's friend of the the minister's counselor it's a major and conflict of interest. If you get rid of the hospital, you won't get no dead body. So don't fix the hospital and then get all the dead body. No, we know why the hospital is here, so. Lord Jesus. All right, come. Don't, don't bother distract me no more. Let me focus on the class. But think about it, Jamaica. Who is them ravishing and raping this country? Who knows if this is a... Friend and company business. You remember last night I said to your Courtney and Jamaica that crime is a big business in this country and the politicians benefit. Yeah. Christians have to prove to me that he's not benefiting from this. He need to prove to Jamaica that he's not benefiting from this. Our company from 2018, right before COVID getting contracts to take up dead body, and the person is your counselor. And Jamaican people not supposed to talk about it. You remember last night I was saying to no, wasn't it last night I saying to no students? Crime is a big business in this country. Let me take this. Hello, good night. Um, teacher. Yes, sir, good night. You realize, is it a coincidence that um, that business started 2018 and we have COVID take over the country by 2019? Probably it was so pre-planned. With so much debt. Is, is it a coincidence? Boy, Carl, I don't know if they're planning these things in advance. Well, we need we, Jamaica we need to look at these things. This is, this, I mean, this, this is, this is rape in the country. So I wonder how much them get per day. <laughs> this is really real life raping. No, I see right now. How much them get per day? That we need to now find out. How much them them charge per day, people? I'm not really, I'm not really certain because I've never had to deal with that, with that sort of thing yet. But, but, but I mean, it, it must be a good business. I need for somebody to tell me so much them charge. Have a good night, teacher. Because All right, Carla, bless you. Yeah. Hello, good night. Yes, Andre, good night. May Pen too. All the dead from May Pen go to Archie's funeral home too. Mighty God. So if he might get the dead from me a pen. Manchester. Spanish Town. KPH. And where the next? UWE. And plus he might call a counselor salary. Mighty God. This guy real. Hello, good night. Hello? Yo, Andre. Yes, Carla, welcome. Hear, hear me. Well, my first time, listen to me. $750,000 for dead. That's the cheapest 
750,000 for one day. Mm. And the cheapest one that. You hear me? All right, my boss. All right, caller. Lord Jesus. Near half a million to 750,000. Hello, good night. Hello. Hi, yes. Stevens. Yes, caller. Good night. You see, when you praise God, good night, my oh. son. Good night. Yes. You see, when you touch the COVID, these doctors, and I quote, because I have to quote by your program, you know, mm. these doctors yes. knew about COVID in Jamaica before the public knew. Let me tell you why I say it. 2019, I went to Western Union. Uh -huh. When I went to Western Union in Spanish Town, I feel my breath begin to shut down. I was beckoning, holding out my hand and beckoning mm -hmm. to people in Spanish Town because I just feel my breath a lot off. I can breathe. Uh -huh. Through my nostril and me can me I try to breathe through my mouth mm. and nothing couldn't come. I stumbled downstairs and I remember seeing a sign mark Lucky Dal. I know this is in Spanish town. Yes. I I moved towards the door because my breath began to shut down. Right? Mm. This is October of twenty. 2019. That's the part. Yeah, that's when, when I finally reached into 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 Lucky Dollar. I never and that it was about after two going to three the afternoon, and I never realized myself again until about something to five after five, mm. and there was no one. But I remember sitting into a city in the chair. It, no, in the city, into the store. When I get home, I never know what to do because my breath, me can't hardly breathe. Mm. Me not know what to do. Yes. When I eventually went to the doctor, the doctor said to me, say, I have never seen this flu yet. Mm. And Stevens, not even as much as a painkiller named Panadol, the doctor couldn't give me. Mm. He said, don't know what is this. Really? In, this is again. October 2019. You see, January, you see, Jan, you see when COVID eventually break out, you know? Mm. When it break out, the doctor Call me and say to me, say, Miss So and So, you realize what you did have in October last year? Mm. And me say, Yes, that. Mm. And you say, It was COVID, you know. So if you can have a funeral home, uh -huh. Right, you are set up these places for them. You are something where we, the public never know about yet. Mm. You know, she said the people are wicked. It's something to yeah. look into, darling. You know, well, I don't know if they were planning for, for, for COVID. I don't know. Andre, Andre, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Uh -huh. Early on in October 2020, yeah. I was at I was at work and I go on to YouTube and me say a movie I come, a nice movie I come. Yes. Me say a nice movie I come. Till me call the attention of a teacher. Me say look on the movie where them are making a China. Mm. Because me just see the people that are on the train, but as they go in, them are drop. Mm. Them are jumping at the road. So I believe it was a movie. Yes. It's when this thing burst out now. 
in March, I realized that this thing wasn't a movie. Okay. All but right. Thank, yeah, man. Thank you for that contribution. That why, mm, I have to move on now. You yeah, hear? COVID yeah, don't bother call it. Don't, don't bother call the name on the program. All right. Thank you for that. Thank you for that thing, though. Because I have to move on. Now. So I gather Jamaica that the first three days when the person dead is a hundred and fifty thousand per day. And if you remove, you plan to remove the body and don't do business with them. Is three hundred thousand you have to pay to get the body moved. You hear that? So if your family go on our archers, a hundred and fifty thousand for the first three days. But if it, if if you if you if you plan to move the body, you have to pay three hundred thousand dollar funeral. One business is big business. So if you not move the body, you have to pay that money and do business with them. Lord Jesus. Though this is a serious crime, you know. Hello, good night. Hello. Andre. Yes, Nicola, talk Andre. quick. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna understand this. So the JP JLP members, whatever in the man name, they are chucking things on the Jamaicans. They are did not give a chance or give the, the opportunity to say yes, I want to, to go to this funeral home. And if you did refuse to keep your body there, you have to pay for taking back. Yes, you have to pay three hundred thousand to um Yo, that GLP party, yeah, a wicked party. And only and them and them people them is a scammer. Because you not give me an opportunity. You know, but I wonder why the government of Jamaica don't have a national mortuary, no sir. You should have um, a place where you can host the body, them and send them to a special funeral home. What, what, right? What well, I'm little local one, them where I we try to make them little money for them, for them family. So they are not for the poor people. They are not for poor people. They are for themselves. Then coming at the party as a wishy washy, hungry belly. And I leave out in a year. If they if we get vote out in the next years, they're leaving rich. Yeah, man, not for them a billionaire out there. Billionaire. You understand? Me not understand why you're pushing things down in the Jamaican them mouth and the idiot them not see we are going. Mm. All right, not thank you. Me, so, I tell you, it is unfair. Yeah, man, all right, Nicola, bless you. Mm -hmm. Is that is a serious business this in? This is a serious business, Duena. Um, any guess in there? This is a serious business. Who? Wow. Mm -mm, wow. Professor Hamilton, good night. Good night. How are you? Um, I am leading a new investigation into an allegation whereby a counselor for Dr. Christopher Tufton is the one who is who was receiving the the contracts to get the the dead of the funeral homes to him. And this is your, what well, them call themselves again? Archer's funeral home. So I'm leading that discussion, but I know you're not here for that, but that's something that is developing that I'm going into. So I'm just letting you know that probably I'll need you to come back after we broaden this a little bit more to talk about the serious acts of nepotism in this government. Because I remember, I recall... The time when Ruel Reed was the Minister of Education and he had a counselor. You remember that thing where the counselor was locked up? Her name is Kim Brown for the, the, the acts of the contract she was getting out of CMU. Don't know if you remember that of the, the counselor at the time. 
but it sounds like there's something brewing again in this light and it's something to look after but comes but here me go and say counselor when you're a professor big big professor professor welcome back to governance 101 thank you for having me there's a development that we need to speak about professor and a lot of people in from last week into this week have been speaking about one having the speaker as the head of the parliament and the prime minister as the head of the government and the speaker that being the wife of the prime minister i know that from inception advocates network jamaica had an issue with Juliet Holness being the Speaker of the House. You have had many, several press releases on the matter. And yet again, we are here with the issue of the Speaker of the House. This time, many are saying that the Speaker is prejudicial. The Speaker somewhat is biased. The piece was unfair. The Speaker is hiding reports. What's your take on the recent developments coming from the opposition and civil society about the wife of the prime minister being the speaker of the house? As you said, Andre, um, the Advocates Network came out very early with a statement that it just doesn't look good. It not look good. And I, I think let's step back as to why. Why doesn't it? What is really the role of the speaker? Yes. What, and, you know, I, I, I heard a conversation, a little piece of the conversation, I didn't hear all of it, but I think the, the, the questions that your listeners are asking and all Jamaica's asking is, how are we managing the country on the behalf of the people of Jamaica? How are we making decisions that somehow don't look like those decisions are in our interests? Interest. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, the, the question really speaks to governance, and that's why we're having a one-on-one, -on -one, right? Yes. It is about how we manage and organize Jamaica, right? When we talked about it, when I was on the last time I talked about it, it's like a team, right? Yes. So we have a team, and we have to organize the rules, make some decisions, and so on. And you know who we bring in to do that? A referee, right? Yeah. You think about like a football match, right? You bring on yes, a referee. certainly need a referee or an umpire if it had been a cricket match. Absolutely. And that's, I remember if anybody watched football and cricket, you know, say, you don't want your umpire or your referee to be biased. True. Right? Because you don't know, want the hand of the referee, the rules that they draw when they say you're out. Right? Yes. You don't know, want, you know, make sure that they don't out your person if it's True. not legitimate. You know, True. that you really have to break the rules and so on. So, we understand that in um, football and cricket. It's the same kind of thing in Parliament. The speaker is kind of the umpire, the referee. And the referee. Ah. And so you don't want the referee to be biased. So the kind of speaker you tend to want is a speaker who really don't have no and interest that's independent. on either side. Right? No, if the if the referee or the umpire is, you know, the wife of somebody who's playing on the match, in the in you know on the field, then you have to wonder, boy, really and truly, we won't get any fair referee in here. We're not sure. Yes, yeah, so and the issue has, of impartiality is exactly, question. Exactly, and that has been the issue from day one. Because that connection is too close for comfort. In fact, I must tell you, I use chat GPT because I never have the time for go search around in other places. I'm not saying yes. that the AI is correct, but I ask the question, where in the world is there a government in which the prime minister's wife is in the speaker the of the house? head of parliament. And chat GPT said, no, then can't find nowhere. There's nowhere else in the world. So Jamaica has so set up. I don't precedent. know. I don't know. Maybe chat, chat GPT not accurate. I'm going to say that quickly, right? Because yes. I can tell you, I use the chat GTP and they're not always right. All right. So I'm going to say that. But it is very rare, if at all, 
that you will find any country in the world in which that situation is held. So Jamaica set a record where the umpire and, and the, the umpire and the, the, to and the, 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 and the captain for the cricket team. There you go. So My there teacher. lies the problem. And so every judgment and every decision that is made is being questioned. It's questionable. Right. And you know, there's a lot of discussion about this particular issue about the tabling and the reports and the so report. on. And most Jamaicans are completely confused and they say, boy, what that have to do with me? Well, it has to do with the fact that this is about the management of your affair. Mm. Remember, you know, we talked about the managing of this team. This team is Jamaica. It's all a way, right? And therefore, if there is mismanagement, if the rules are not um, properly developed in our interests, if they're not properly implemented in our interests, if the referee is not fair, then it's all our business. So we have to understand that that is the context in which all of this discussion is taking place. Let us carry the conversation a little further tonight, Prof. So the referee got the re report, got the report from January. Mm -hmm. The referee sent back the report to the Auditor General. What are the grounds on which the Speaker of the House can send back a report? Well, you know, the law sets out the framework in which not only these reports are tabled, but the powers of the Auditor General um, and other agencies of government in which we understand their roles and their responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So it's important to understand that the Auditor General have a very special role. Let's take it back to the cricket match, right? So yes. money have to spend for the, for the cricket, right? To play to the play. game. All right. And so you, you need somebody to check that the management of this match and the spending of the money to make sure the match happens is done within the rules, True. That's the role of the Auditor General. The Auditor General is there to make sure to check that our money, our money is spent the way it's supposed to spend. No teeth in no one, no all kind of corruption and thing in it. That is the role of the Auditor General. And the Constitution protects that Auditor General by providing powers that yes. enables the Auditor General to do their work without the domination of the executive. But, you know, I want to come back to this definition of the executive and the legislation Legislative. The rules, mm -hmm. because it's very important. It's part of the confusion. Let me pause and do that now, you know, because this issue of the reports has this problem of yes. the role of the legislature. Legislative the versus role the role of, of the executive. executive. Right, right. No. What are we talking about when we talk about the legislature and the executive? And, I, you mm. know, I want to give a historical context because, you know, we don't just end up here today. You know? We come from this long history. And yes. it's not many, many years ago. We, the majority of us, our four parents, our enslaved Africans who were here in Jamaica yes. 300 years ago, they yes. did not have the right to vote. So these True. MPs that we are calling our representatives in parliament did not were not elected by us. The first election in Jamaica, I want to tell your audience, is all the way back in 1663, right? Mm. And the voters list was 300 white men, not women, yes. white men out of a population of about 6,000 at the time. So it's not even all the white people could have voted. Right. So you started parliament with a very elitist select mm. group of people that you're running the entire society yes. on, on their behalf. Right. You have the governor and that is who they represent. Him. So you mm -hmm. fast track down to um, emancipation, 1838. At that point, we all in principle, theoretically had the right to vote. So we could have voted in who we want. But guess what? The rules were there. Yes to prevent us because we have to have land and all them things. We're not on a land, right? So it's mm. all the way down in 1944 before all of us could get this right to vote the people we want to represent us. Why do I go all the way back there? 
Yes. Because I want to set up the idea that when we vote in elections, we vote to put people in parliament to represent us, to make laws for us on our behalf. Yes. That's who the legislators are. True. And everybody who votes does that. But there's another group of people who are also legislators, who we call the executive, whose responsibility it is to execute the law. That's why we call him executive. The executive. Right. So and some, let, just let them know who are the executives. Well, the executive mainly is the cabinet. are the cabinet ministers and the, of course, the prime minister. The prime minister mm -hmm. leads the cabinet and that is the main responsibility for them to execute the law. But the yes. lawmaking process is in the hands of every MP, MP. including the executive. And there is what we are the and confusion the start. That are the confusion start right there. Because if you have more, plenty, plenty people from the executive who dominate the parliament, and if you have the power concentrated in the in the in the cabinet, you know, yes. the prime minister, then Everybody else just kind of keep them mouth and go with what the prime minister said. True. And it's like, it coming like a dictatorship. And that is how we've been running parliament since independence. Whichever side is in power, right? We have the prime minister yes. dominating the cabinet, the ministers, and it's them running. In fact, they run the entire country and the legislator, the people we vote to speak yes. for us, are speaking mm -hmm. mainly for the parties and not yes. for us. So that is how the things start to break down, right? Because everybody just chips them teeth now. We can't but a vote. It no make no sense. We don't see no difference between the two sides. That is exactly where we are today. Now, what is happening is this, that when these reports, now remember, let me remind you, you have the speaker who is the referee, you have yes. the people in parliament who represent these who are the, co the competitors, yes. Right? And now you have an auditor general that are check now for make sure that we're spending money according to the rules. We're making sure that money don't thief out and all this kind of thing, right? And then when you have a report now showing some member of parliament collecting money. That are the problem. Hold on, we're not yes. getting there yet. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Because first... The people they want the spice. First, first, the first question is, all right, so the reports are done every year. So annually you get some report. And the, the rules are, and this has been going on for a long time, um, over 100 years, when the Auditor General tables the report in Parliament, then it um, sends the report to Parliament, then it's tabled immediately, as soon as possible. That's yes. the idea. Now, all of a sudden, we're hearing now that the speaker, the former speaker, this speaker, now have a new rule. And the new rule is, boy, it has to go to the parliament. The, the ministers have to look at it first. We have, we're hearing that, certainly in the case of the um, Integrity Commission reports, that's another agency that does reports that go to parliament. That now have to go to a committee. In Oversight parliament. committee. Right. The problem that many of us are having is this. Yes. If our representatives are going there to represent us to speak on our behalf and they're making mm -hmm. laws on our behalf, mm -hmm. then we have to be very careful that all the decisions made in parliament yes. by the legislators, it is, we're talking about the House of Representatives now. Remember, parliament have two houses. One is the Senate and Senate one, and is, one the is the lower House. house. Right, so we are talking about the lower house, those are representative, right? Now, we don't want to make, we don't want all the, the rules and everything that happened in that house of representative to be dominated by the executive. Mm. Because if that's the case, they're making the law, them implementing the law, and them refereeing the law. You see the problem there? Making and the law. Making the law, because them is mm. legislator, some are the executive, but them dominating the legislature, so they must yes. execute the law too. And now we have someone who is refereeing the law. the law in the same way. So they could call it a dictatorship. 
But boy, we, we, you can call it that, but remember, if in a dictatorship, you know, but I have no um parliament, you know. The parliament only makes sense if you're building a democracy. Kind of the dictator, mm. dictatorship, you just make the rule, you and your friend them, right? You know, you don't need no parliament. No, so but remember that. That's a framework, but you have the, the the lead captain who's basically working in a dictatorship. That's what the All right, but the effect is exactly if if the effect is that you have the house. And you have the, the whole game set up, but it rig up in such mm. a way that you're constantly getting this kind of dictatorial type decision as if you don't have a parliament in which you're going to debate and so on and so on. Then that's why people say we have a dictatorship. Yes. Right? But we have to fix what we have. And what the, the, the idea of fixing what we have is to improve the governance improve mm. accountability make sure so the laws and the rules and things them sort out so it not create the kind of confusion that we see going on here now where everybody confused because we hear said law is both of them are read law one side i read law and say we don't have to carry it to no um minister or anything another yes. side say well it should just go straight but whatever the details are there are laws and let me also add another person in this. We now have an, uh, the role for the attorney general. Now, the attorney general is the lawyer who is supposed to represent all the government and that means all of us, right? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you have to sort out those rules. So, the so why then does the speaker doesn't want the attorney general's ruling? be made public and he's the lawyer on behalf of all of us. That is the problem right there. So you can't put the word, this is where now, you know, you have a strong executive, the executive dominating the parliament, then the executive is treating the lawyer as if it's the executive lawyer. <laughs> Remember that? It's not the so, people's lawyer. It's not the people's lawyer, exactly. And people are saying, we want to see you the ruling because if we the people remember you know i want our listeners to keep remembering this every time i come on your show when you keep saying it again and again yes. are we on jamaica the government supposed to represent our will we when are supposed are, we are to tell our representatives what we want them to do right and therefore everything is supposed to set up to represent what we want and so when the attorney general yes. is representing the government, the people we put in parliament, you know, our people we send for go manage on our the country on our behalf. On the heart, right? yes. When the that attorney general is giving a ruling, then we want to see it. We're not begging a favor. We want to see it because you're making rules about us, about on our behalf and in our interest. So that is what is happening now. All of a sudden, now, now here's the thing. Now the lawyers say, well, some rules, well, maybe we shouldn't share. I don't know. Maybe they are. I would want to err on the side that most rules should be made yes. public because you're mm -hmm. talking about the people's affairs, mm -hmm. right? So if not all, most of it. And in this instance where it's causing so much confusion on the part of the people of Jamaica, Everybody is saying, certainly the advocates are saying, yes. make the ruling of the attorney public. general public. But Juliet Holness don't want to do that. She wants to reserve the right to keep it in her bosom. Well, let us hope that she does what she did yesterday, I think, or the day before, which is she did not, she returned those reports, those two reports, and um, there was a call, strong call on behalf, on, the, on behalf of the advocates and others have been saying, listen, um, table the reports. The opposition have been saying, table the reports. So she finally tabled the report. So, so she come under hope, public pressure. Under public pressure. So let's hope that the pressure to get the Attorney General's um, opinion public mm -hmm. will reach to the Speaker and the Speaker will do what she did with the reports which is to make it public. I want to ask you, you I want to ask you another question cuz you should be up in parliamentary procedures. Is it moral and ethically bounded for the speaker of the house to reprimand the clerk of the house? Well, that has become another issue and I want to again put that in context because the 
clerk of the house is a civil servant mm -hmm. and is guided so, by the staff orders so if the clerk of the house is a civil servant can a politician be reprimanding a civil servant absolutely not and let me say this that um, the clerk doesn't work for the speaker oh the, repeat, the repeat, clerk, repeat that the repeat clerk that. does not work for the speaker the clerk does not work for the party Government. in the simple way the the clerk is responsible to the ministry responsible for parliamentary affairs right so Juliet Wallace is not her boss absolutely not and therefore there's a procedure for disciplining um members of the public sector mm. the procedures are in the staff orders every person who is going to be disciplined in the public sector must have a fair trial you have to hear their side of the story yes and that process must be completed before so, any letter can be placed on the file of any civil servant so basically the, the opposition is asking for her to withdraw the letter and she's adamant that she's not doing so well let me say that what i heard in parliament from the speaker is that she is in dialogue to resolve the matter i didn't hear what you just said you may be correct but i heard that she is in dialogue so i understand that until that dialogue and discussion finishes then she will determine whether what happened was uh, consistent with the law first not good or bad, but because remember, everybody but, has to you know what is done is, is, is inexperience in parliamentary procedures. Why Juliet Wallace did that, you know, it's inexperience and to step out of bound to do something like that, reprimanding. So, if the clerk, she's not the clerk boss, and she write the letter to the clerk. Who is responsible for the clerk? Well, well this is the point. Um, the the, 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 the um, clerk has a ministry and a minister and a permanent secretary responsible for the Her. work of um, the clerk. The parliament. Who work in parliament. And therefore, um, the permanent secretary is the person that so that letter only, should have possibly gone to the permanent secretary and not the clerk definitely not copied to members of parliament absolutely not yeah because if all 63 members of parliament saw that letter it's wrong yes so that that was an error and um and i think that that will be corrected over time and i think that the dialogue and the discussion that is taking place is about putting what happened in perspective and I think it will become clear to the speaker that what happened was inappropriate, unfortunate, and quite frankly, unethical. Case, absolutely, because even if there was no rule, you have a problem with somebody who is working with you to help you to do your job. You don't embarrass the person like that. Oh, Lord. No, 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 no. Mr. That, Phil, for the clerk in the house. Yeah, see, no look good at, you know no look that good at all. You know that yesterday, you write me and make everybody come. Remember, I know 63 MP get that, you know, and the MP, them just have circulated it in the media. And everybody get that, in you know, Courtney. This woman has been working with the parliament for near 30 odd years, 40 odd years soon to retire this woman has never been in the public domain in a them baga baga and fre 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 and because of political inexperience you made the woman look like that she should withdraw the comment and she should publicly apologize to the lady because never we have seen several i am 32 years old and i've seen several speakers over my years and i know you prof hamilton have witnessed several speakers over the years have you ever seen this kind of low class attitude to any member no no absolutely in the, not in the, in the in the parliament and the parliamentary team absolutely not and i and i think again just in terms of um just how we interact with the people who work with us uh, we can't do a good job unless we have a good relation 
And as long as that woman is going to be working with her, she will have a problem. Um, if, if that is the way she continues to engage. Dereliction of duties. So I think that, I think it was in bad taste. And I do hope that there is a public apology to her um, and, and, and a direct one, of course, to her, but that the country also knows that um, this is a teachable moment for all involved. All of us who are observing this for the first time, and we understand that, you know, not only is it contrary to the rules, but mm. importantly, just contrary to common sense and de decency. Let us now take a look at the report, Prof. Hamilton. Mm. The report for the Tax Administration Authority of Jamaica has now revealed that the taxpayers of this country are being paying almost $400 million dollars for the past two years for properties not yet um just send a message and said we'll soon you understand <coughs> for the properties and mandiblan on Otter bay they are saying that we're paying almost 400 million dollars for those properties one of those properties now has been revealed belongs to member of parliament and state minister in the ministry of labor and social security norman dunn isn't this an act of nepotism well let me say that i have not seen these recent developments today was very busy for me um i think this happened either today or yesterday this yes. whole right i know that there were two reports that's what i was aware of um, one was a special audit of the Finance Services Commission, and mm. that was delayed in Parliament for nearly three months. Yes. And, um, and there was also a special audit of the Tax Administration, and that was also delayed for nearly two months. That's what I know. I've not had a chance to read the reports. I've heard about the, um, the fact that there was this building um construction tax the tax administration was trying to fix up a building to occupy it and that it is not been occupied as yet the amount of money that is paid is a lot and all right so I, let us, I want to show you a report i had when i heard it i must tell you andre is that don't sound like offices it sounds like you're paying for a plaza or a it sounds like it's much more and maybe oh. there is a legitimate explanation for the size of it i just don't know so i want to so say yes, I, for the 400 million it sounds like a plaza or apartment it's yeah it does sound like offices you know like for rent um I, that's a lot of money now maybe it included the renovation cost i don't know but no it's gonna include the renovation cost because tax admin came out this evening and they were saying in the press release that is a part of the procurement process that they have to pay that kind of lease for the properties wow i i that's just very very high as far as i understand from rental of properties across jamaica i've never heard anything like this but what i want to say is this that is why we have an auditor general with the powers embedded in a constitution mm -hmm. And we have to pay close attention, all of us taxpayers, on the developments taking place. Because remember the concern about a referee. You want an independent referee. Yes. So when you put that person to manage and to referee the rules, they should be independent. That auditor general must also be independent. And therefore, when the reports are made we must be able to trust those reports okay True. and certainly our auditor general's performance to date has not ha, i've not heard anybody question whether we can't trust these reports and therefore we all put a lot of weight on this and so um it is the details of it of course i've not seen it and I urge so, the public now that what we will do public. is do a follow up with you next week yeah. for you to read through the report.
Right. And it's not me, as party. you know, there are other members of the network who have been following. Who this will come and, will come and make a contribution this. on the report. But the idea is this. Yes. This report is our report. Remember that, you know, um, public, uh, everybody listening. It's our report. So you should read the reports. You know, Jamaicans, we do a lot of speculation and talk and everybody said this and we go on social media. But the reports media. are very long, Professor. It's, we have two nice text two, reports for them. True, but that is why and I have programs like Jamaicans yours, Andre. Like reading. Andre, that is why I have programs like yours, you know, because people will come listen to you, right? And true. therefore, you are going to break it down and tell them what you know the report. And you the will tell report, them the report. But I, I am dissecting it. Yeah, I am dissecting it, Jimmy. And, and I love you do a good job in explaining some of these things to people because you're right, not many of us have the time. But for those who have the time, read the reports because guess what? When you speak, you can speak with a little more certainty because you have evidence, you have information. You don't have to make it up, you don't have to guess. Yes. You know, and that's why I urge people to look at these reports so they can be armed with the facts with more information than just speculation yes jamaica that's where we have it tonight for governance 101 that's thank you, you know, for having our, me. that's professor rosalie hamilton one of the conveners for advocates network jamaica who has come on and shed some light on the roles and the responsibility of the speaker thank you so much prof hamilton we're going Thanks. to take a quick break and when Thanks we come back we have job. dr devon taylor joining us as we set a rat trap to discuss the whole issue of the access to our beaches publicly. Good. Thank you, Prof. Hamilton. All the best. Bye bye. All right. Partner draw. Partner draw. Andre. Andre. Set, set a rat trap. Set a rat trap. Set a rat trap. With the two for the rat them. Set a rat trap. The set a set a rat trap. Set a rat trap, set a rat trap, with the two put a rat dead, set a rat trap. The set is set a rat trap. Set a rat trap in the parliament. Set a rat trap, with the two put a rat dead, set a rat trap. Set a rat trap, set a rat trap, with the two put. Set a rat trap in the FLA. Set a rat trap, with the two put a rat dead, set a rat trap. Set a rat trap, set a rat trap, with the two put a rat dead. Set a ratchet trap in the school. The one them we are teeth to pick in them money. Set a rat trap. Set a rat trap. Yes, Jamaica, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. We're here to have another discussion tonight. A discussion that many Jamaicans are talking about, particularly members of the Rastafarian community. And just ordinary members who have an interest talking about access to our public beaches. And we have, I believe, again, the convener and the president of Jabim here with us talking about Little Dons River. There was a demonstration there yesterday. I show you guys see this Rastaman, tall Rastaman, who has left the United States and come to Jamaica to be a part of the demonstration. So he's here tonight to talk about what is happening with Jabim. Greetings, Dr. Devon Taylor. What's happening? Give us an update. Greetings. Greetings, Andrian. Greetings to all of your uh, viewers. Yes. yes. Well, um, you know, Jamaica have a beach access problem. A beach access problem is an historical one where mm -hmm. um, the laws of the land in Jamaica does not give Jamaicans you know, the right to access our beaches, the right to swim, the right to bathe, the right to fish, or the right to walk along our shores. Yes. And all of these, um, you know, uh, restrictions are, you know, codified in the Beach Control Act of 1956. So um, we had to, you know, put a movement together to, to really address the problem. And by addressing so the problem, problem... So the Act, the Beach Control Act is from 1956? Yes. And it puts limitation on the Jamaican people having access to our beaches. That's correct. Okay, you can proceed. Yes, so, um, so you know, we had to really um, develop a movement because what we're really seeing is that 
we're losing more access. You know, we're losing more access as more lands around the coastline of Jamaica are sold off, you know, for various things, for development of hotel, villas, you know, private interests, you know, then the citizens of the country lose more access. And I just want to put the statistics, you know, clear to the, to the, to the public. The coastline of Jamaica is 495 miles around. Um, what, 495 miles around. 494. Mm -hmm. And Jamaicans only have 2.8 miles of access. So it's 494 miles around. And Jamaica has only access to 2.8? Eight. Wow. And that number was actually since 2000. So just think about 24 years later when you have massive expansion in tourism, massive expansion in, you know, different kinds of um, condominiums and villas built along the coast. So I yes. think that number needs to be updated. We have actually lost a lot of the access around the coastline. So we're mm. in a crisis situation right now. We so this has been from 2000. So 24 years later, probably could be 1%, 1 yeah, or 1% 1, 1 around the island. Yes. My that is God. Old. Yes. So, I mean, it's an historical problem, you know, because this legislation is pretty much discriminatory towards the Jamaican people by not mm -hmm. giving them that rights. You know what I mean? Um, and, you know, it's, we're an independent country since 1962. The act is from 1956. So it is um, a colonial era act, act and it still um, is what governs the um, regulation around coastal spaces. But it yes. also empowers, um, you know, the government to really, um, you know, allow this to happen because they did not repeal or replace this. They did mm -hmm. not update it um, to really reflect the will of the Jamaican people, which is, you know, everyone would like to access their beaches and rivers. And that is the cry that we saw. And in response wow. to community displacement, you know, in Mami Bay, St. Anne, you know, at Little Duns River, in Blue Lagoon, in Bob Marley Beach, in Cooper Spen. I mean, you could name it. We had to develop a movement that would, you know, respond to this beach access crisis. And mm. so this is this is where um, the Jamaica Beach Birthright Environmental Movement was born. It was born in response to, you know, a colonial era law that, you know, brings the vestiges of colonial as a colonialism into present time that is now arming, you know, the freedom yes. of movement of Jamaicans towards yes. um, using their beaches and rivers. So that's where um, you know, you know, the, the 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 genesis of the movement is. And so when you really see us um out there, you know, working, you know, protesting, you know, I mean, I'm doing all the advocacy, we're trying to mm -hmm. really pull back these access. But we're what we fundamentally would like to see is a repeal and replacement of this act. You know, with something that so is. They want the Beach Control Act of 1956 to be repealed. Absolutely. Yes. So, it, how you plan on going about achieving this? Well, I mean, this is something that the Jamaican people, um, you know, have to want. And so, what we have actually seen so far in our advocacy, that is what the Jamaican people want. So, um, you know, by bringing this to the attention of the public, and most people did not know. And I'm not sure if you knew that there was a colonial era law that sits on the books in Jamaica that actually tell you, Andre, say you now have no right to go beach. Repeat right? that. <laughs> There's, this act basically tells every Jamaicans that they have no right to access their beaches. They only access their beaches by permission, right? So whether wow. I, yeah, your permission it work by. So King Charles is saying that. I can't access the beach without his permission. Absolutely. So, so how King Charles never tell Barbados and Trinidad and Antigua that? Why especially him design the big control act for Jamaica? Why was Jamaica specific? Yes. Jamaica no. beach is better than the beaches in the other Caribbean islands. No, well, that's a really good question. Um, you know, but you see the the, the the colonial power always leave a lot of traps in place and it depends on who were representing jamaica's within such time that negotiated these coastal regulations these regulations were never in the interest of the jamaican people and they were written in a time in a colonial time right why the the, the act in jamaica 
you know, was so restrictive? You know, it's a good question, but I, I suspect, you know, um, you know, the colonial masters, right, wanted to actually control these spaces because these spaces they know were valuable spaces, you know, pristine lands sit along the coastline, pristine beaches, you know, and they're also thinking ahead as to, you know, what economic um, activities could go on in these spaces, all right? Um, and there were a lot of plantations that were associated with coastal properties. So the lands have always been in the hand of the colonial power and the lands were also vested in the crown and the crown mm -hmm. wanted to protect, you know, its, its jewels. And so, you know, they developed this legislation, you know, that really restrict our use. Um, they had also termination clause within this um, legislation that basically infringes upon the right of fisher folks that yes. you know, started fishing industry, you know, um, um, post-1956. Mm. Um, they did that, but they gave full rights to anyone who owned lands that adjoin um, to the ocean. And guess who owned most of the land that adjoins to the sea? The hoteliers. Yes, you know, and the wealthy. So those, you know, they had entitlement clause inside here. So the app was designed, all right, for the ruling class to control that space. All right. It was designed for the colonial class to control that space. And it was designed to exclude the descendants of enslaved Africans. So it's truly colonial. It's truly discriminatory, um, you know, that act. So what's the situation with Little Ochi? You had a demonstration there. What's the situation with Little Ochi? So it's, so it's Little Duns River. Um, is, down yeah, it's a space that was kind of um, developed. I should say it was it was um, 60 years ago. Some Rastafari and Regions who used to live along the frontier established, you know, um, a settlement there, you know, living in their natural way, living in their communes. And they established that space over 60 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, you know, they would allow anyone who want to come into the space to use that space. The space, you know, matures, um, you know, um, several decades now to become a favorite spot of the Jamaican people. It's a very rustic space. Um, yes. And the space, you know, the, the, the brethren put in all the amenities in the space. They had a bathroom in the space. They have cook shops in the space, you know, yes. I mean, they have vending in the space. So it's truly, a, a, you know, a look a nice, cozy Jamaican space. And um, 18 months ago, you know, a murder took place on the, the side of the road, right? Um, close to the, the um, to Little yes. Dutch. The police comes in, they shut it down. They said, we have to do some investigation. We are fear of reprisal killing. So once we do that and all is sorted out, then the space will be open. It's 18 months later, all right? And the space is still closed um, to the vendor. They have opened the space in Boxing Day for one day. They since um, extended it to two days. So you can only go to Little Dunt River on Saturdays on Sunday. Now, wow. the, the brethren, them who use this space for feed them family, you know, whose economics are really dependent on that space, they have not been able to earn a bread. They have not been earn, able to earn a living for 18 months. So you said the economic livelihood of all of those Rastas and Jamaicans down there have been so for the eight, and it was only because there was a debt near to the road? absolutely yep that's it and so you know the, the 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 property is allegedly owned by the urban development corporation of jamaica yes I mean, despite those bridges been there for you know more than 60 years um and udc you know has you know closed the gate shut it down and um you know the, the bridges them can't access their their livelihood so we had to really respond, and how we responded, we filed a prescriptive um, a case in the St. Anne's Bay Court. And oh, you filed a, file a lawsuit? Absolutely, because if you have been using the track, a roadway that leads to a beach, a river, for 20 years uninterrupted, then you are allowed to continue to do so, but the okay. court must recognize your right to do so. So we filed that in the court. Um, you know, and the defendant is the UDC to tell them that, well, these these um, bridges here have been using the space for 60 years, far surpass the 20 year requirement. I would yes, like. So that has been three decades. 
Yes, we'd like the court to recognize that and to write it on the UDC land title that the public is entitled to use this space in perpetuity. So that case is ongoing. But what we have also asked the UDC is that, listen, while the case is going on, you know, you know, these brethren have to feed their Open family. the gates so the people can have access. Absolutely. Right? That's what we're asking them to do. And they have not really been responsive in um, the way they should be, you know, in solidarity with the suffering that is happening in this country. You know, so approximately must... how many are your brethren is this affecting? So there are like, you know, like 13 um, different um, vendors that does various activities down there. You know, 13? Yes, they rent tubes, they have food, I mean, sell water, you know, some sell carving, they'll rent you a little um, water shoes, you know, to deal with the rough edges of the rock, you know, I mean, they have a lifeguard um, there as yes. well. So the, the space, the, the, the guys deal with it really well, you know, I mean, it wasn't some um, just kind of rundown um, activity they were doing it, they were really dealing with the economics of the space. You know, they had, um, you know, have electric light in the space, mm -hmm. good garbage collection, sanitary, um, you know, um, um, convenience in the space. So it, it was run properly. I mean, and, you know, it's unfortunate that, um, you know, someone died outside the premise. I mean, Jamaica will live in, so them things are going all over the country. And when they have. Yeah, because it's 1,500 people drop dead every year. And you don't close down these spaces. And we know, you know, murders have happened close to hotels. It has happened close to business spaces. It has happened in the middle of the road. It happened all across Jamaica. And, and then no... close it down. So why close down the beach? Absolutely. And so that is a, that is kind of suspicious, you know, to the community in and around it. I gather about... based on my research that there is a developer who should get little Ochi. Have you heard of those? allegations that there's a businessman in St. Anne who possibly is in business with the UDC to have the acquisition of Little Ochi. Have you heard about that one? You mean Little Duns River, right? Not Little, Little Duns River, yes. Yeah. No, I have not heard about um, any kind of deals um, there. Um, that would be quite unfortunate, um, you know, to... The, the the ones who actually made that place what it is you know it was hard work dealing with the vegetation it was all work developing brand little duns river because you know big duns river um you know folks of low socioeconomic um, status cannot afford the fees to go to little duns river so they come to a free beach a free space wide open you know where that is run properly so i'm not familiar with any kind of alternative um you know individuals who you know get got the franchise or anything but again at jamaica so we're not surprised um what we have to um you know let these individual know very clear is that this case is proceeding in the courts mm. and it's the, the 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 community have really good standings okay they have established this space for over 60 years so um they cannot you so, know, and should not really, um, you know, uh, displace, you know, the rights of these individuals to continue um, applying their their um, their livelihood at Little Dunn's River for. Um, so, when is the court date for this lawsuit? Um, so, I'm going to have to get back to you. We just um, had one two months ago. Um, so, I, the next one um, I think is going to be in June that we go back into the Senate's Bay Court again. To um to have another um sitting so far we've only had mentioned dates. Um, so you just had the mentioned date, nothing much to go into the matter. Right. And these court matters can take up all to five, ten years, you know. Well, we are open not. We're open not. I mean, as you can see, the beach. Who access, is your attorney? Dr. Marcus Goff. Oh, Dr. Goff. Oh, that mm. I mean what you can see is that the beach access issue now you know have made it into the manifesto of both um the pmp and the glp all right yes. we have we have heard very clear language you know from um you know the pmp that so you heard from your prime minister last week saying that they'll be doing more for public beaches he he said that he'll be developing fantasy beach and 
Winifred Beach in, Mon uh, in Portland as the next two public beaches. What's your take on that? Well, the first thing is that, Andre, the, 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 the argument that they're going to develop 10 beaches in Jamaica for Jamaicans, right? And they're starting there. Now, beaches, you can't really develop a beach, you know. A beach is a natural um, existing ecosystem. So mm -hmm. what beaches really need are conservation. You don't need to go in and throw concrete and build all these kind of uh, exquisite infrastructure on beaches. They don't really need that. You're actually arming well, the I ecosystem. Mean them not state. Yes, you have to do that. That is that is kind of our nature work. And beaches regenerate their cycles. And, and that is a very important part of um, maintaining biodiversity. It's a very important um, in terms of um, climate mitigation as, as a result of sea level rise. So mm. a conservation approach you should take towards these. But all of these beaches that the prime minister uh, mentioned, the public already have access to these spaces. So you're not really increasing access. And as I said to you earlier, we have yes. about 2.8 miles of access around the country. It's not that they're opening new access to new um, you know, beaches. It's very much the same um, you know, um, um, beaches that you're talking about. So we're not really increasing access. So that is something that we're not really um, sold on. Winifred Beach, um, I was there um, a few days ago, is a very well-run beach by the um, Free Winifred Benevolent Society. You mm. do not need any form of government intervention. Um, so you don't need any government intervention for Winifred Beach? You absolutely do not need that. What Winifred could do it um, is maybe... Uh, some sustainable um you know infrastructure along the line of fresh water collection there some solar panels um you know for power generation um in the space um that's pretty much um what they need and so if the government do want to help them they could mm -hmm. you know give them a grant to actually put in some um, renewables um in the space but it's the beach is very beautiful it's a very healthy space um what if it does that need that in terms so, of fantasy yeah fantasy, fantasy. Fantasy Beach in St. Anne is, um, you know, St. <laughs> Anne is the biggest parish, right? And it's one of the spaces where you have um, the, the, the most de developed, quote-unquote, um, tourism product. And if you really want to increase beach access in St. Anne, you would not um, just say you're going to develop um, Fantasy Beach. You would actually um, create conservation easement over lands that all these hotels are built on and all these guest houses are built on and open up these spaces to the public that was opened up in um you know as late as the 2000 the expansion mm. of the tourism product have closed the scent and coastline and most um citizens in St. Anne do not have access um to their childhood beaches i mean i am from St. Anne. you know we oh, have you're Mami Saint Anne. yes homebred Mm -hmm. we have uh mommy bear beach now in the courts i mean and that's a space that we had access to I mean, I had access to over 3.8 miles of coastline growing up. I don't have access to any of it right now, including the my Miami favorite Bay. childhood beach, which is um, Laughing Waters. I don't have access to it. So wow. the, the issue around access is, is real, you know, and these 10 beaches will not do it for Jamaica. It's actually, um, you know, it's, it's a scam. You know what I mean? It's a um, drop in the bucket. It's not even a drop in the bucket. I mean, 2.8 miles compared to 494 miles. You know, you're you're basically trying to pull one on the Jamaican people. So what we're asking for is just fundamental changes so that we can access yes. the entire coastline. And that should not be odd. It's been done in several countries. You know, I mean, it's done by our neighbor and Caribbean islands. And it, you know, does not impact the tourism product. And it seems that we are held hostage to a kind of tourism product that is expanding in Jamaica, that is further restricting access to the Jamaican people. And all of this is also tied into how the legislation is. The legislation allows for this to happen. Mm -hmm. And so I think one of the progressive things, if the government is really serious, is to really repeal this legislation, replace it with something that is more progressive and more fundamentally giving Jamaican rights. And I think some of this has been lost in the discussion around fundamental rights, you know, because as I talk about a colonial era act. Well, the opposition said that should he become government, he'll be looking into the beach access policy. You heard when Mark Golding said that, right? Yes. So you think that's a reasonable um, call? 
it's the, best, it's the best place to start. The best place to start in fundamental, fundamentally changing something that is discriminatory, something that you know is a hangover from colonialism that is impacting our lives currently, is to start at that, that legislation and remove it. You know what I mean? Um, you know, so that you bring something in. So you want every Jamaican to have access to the beach, like how them have it at Negril, where the whole and Negril beach line, you can just walk on it. And, and you know, there's restriction in, in Negril too. And many of the really? access points to the beach in Negril have been closed. You can enter the Negril beach and walk the stretch. That is true. But we're, but many of the access points that people used to use, hotels are now sitting on them. But the product in Negril is way better. You know what I mean? You can walk along the coastline in Negril. You can swim in the sea there. And that's a better model. You know, we just want this to really be codified in law. We need this to be fully protected. So, um, you know, no future generation would have to really be fighting for, you know, walking on any beach in Jamaica. Um, that, that should not, not be, um, you, you know, know what, mm. what what we experience, you know, as an independent country. You know, Barbados does not do it, you know. I mean, certainly not in Cuba, you know, and St. Lucia and, and Trinidad. We we, you know, Bahamas and the Cayman, yeah. you know, um, they, they they do not have these problems. And why the problem um, you know, continue in Jamaica, you know, I mean, we have always said the tourism product that we practice, you know, it's a it's extractive, you know, I mean, it is an enclave tourism model and it basically yeah. just shuts us all out. And that needs to change. And the only way that is going to change is a legislative one, because they're not going to negotiate um, their, um, you know, their economic position. I, mm -hmm. I should say it, with with um, with government. So government have to respond to the um, the people, and the people um, want access to, to to their beaches and rivers. What's happening with the Bob? Can you give an update on the Bob Marley Beach lawsuit? Right. So as you know, tomorrow we are going to be in the Sutton Street Court, um, you know, trying to protect continued access to the Bob Marley Beach. So um, oh, tomorrow you're going to Sutton Street to get that continued access. Yes, we're going there to continue that um, case. That's also a prescriptive right case. Um, and the Commission of Lands, you know, is one of the fe defendants there, along with a private interest, the Wolf Group um, um, companies. So, you know, I mean, a year ago or so, you know, there was a move to really, um, you know, privatize Bob Marley Beach and, you know, shut the tracks and the roadways down because private interest is slated to build what they call an ultra luxury development um, on the lands in and around Bob Marley Beach, more than 200 acres of land. Mm. Now, um, you know, the property, you know, that these um, individuals own actually covers the tracks and the roadways that you would use to get to the beach. So if they were given, you know, free reign to actually, you know, um, possess all those lands, they would have actually means that all that, all, even Bob Marley Beach would be no more. They would close the tracks. And so we had to file in the court to keep those um, roadway open. And what we're asking the court to do is to recognize the, the, um, the rights of the community in and around Bob Marley Beach that have been using that those trucks and roadway again from the 50s when Naya Binge Rastafari actually settled in that space and established their community, established a Rastafari community in there. You know, I mean, it's one of the oldest Rastafari community ever established in Jamaica, was established at Bob Marley Beach. So my and question is, are there plans by the developers to move off the Naya Binge Rasta people off the land? Well, I mean, a lot of things was tried and a lot of things um, got upset. All right. So, we, you know, we, you know, we had advocacy that protected one of the Rastafari family in the space that we have to say right now, our landowners at Bob Marley Beach. And that was a really good success for those Rastafari who have been in that space for more than 60 years. They are now safe and secure. There's another Rastafari um, family um, down there, the Stevenson family. Bongo Gabby, who also was a mentor to Bob Marley, um, um, he built a house in the space down there. And that family is actually in the Court of Appeals fighting to keep their space down there, um, mm -hmm. you know, as, as we speak. So the threat in that space is real, um, you know, and the story, as it, it is always when a hotel development is slated for a coastal space, the communities in and around that space really suffers and they suffer so from displacement. 
And that so how many the, people are talking about possibly should suffer in that? It should they should should they they, they, they judge grant this thing to them and not to the to, to the to the 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 rest of areas. I mean, the entire Jamaica suffers. There's a thriving fishing community at Bob Marley Beach, you know. There's a strong economic presence in Bob Marley Beach. But who always suffer is the people of Jamaica. You will now have one less beach that you can enjoy. And we have many different styles of beach. Bob Marley Beach is a, you know, it's a black sand beach. It sits right up against um, a mountain. I mean, it is a very, you know, majestic space. And people yes. within Kingston, St. Andrew and St. Thomas use this beach a lot. But it's the Jamaican people that suffers once when a beach gets closed down. You know, I mean, I don't know what the population is that lives along the coastal plain, but, you know, it's, a, it's Easter weekend right now and many Jamaicans are flushing out across the island, you know, having mm. a grand time. And so they want to enjoy different kind of beach, different flavors beach. And so we should be able to. It's part of the ecolog ecological heritage of the nation. You know, there's our treasures of the land and there should not be any restriction. We can mm. coexist on beaches with um, tourists and white people, right? Why is it that you want, you know, spaces in Jamaica to be segregated? You want to say, I have 10 beaches for Jamaican over here and then the rest you give to tourists. I mean, what's mm. wrong with we? Why we can't go up on the same beach as these white people? True. I mean, this is truly, uh, it is truly, you know, racist. You know, I mean, you know, when you behave like that, that is separate but equal is highly unconstitutional. Them try them thing out South Africa, it never fly, right? It yes. falls in them. Try them thing at Jim Crow in America, it never work. And it will sure. not work in Jamaica because you cannot build a country, you know, um, on this inequitable level, in this kind of discriminatory level. And we are asking them, it's the right thing to do. It is the right thing to do to remove this act, bring in something that is more progressive, you know, and bring in something that, you know, will... um will really deals with um reparatory justice as so, it relates to um you know the discrimination against the, the descendants of enslaved africans so you have true. one lawsuit for the bob marley beach you have one for the little duns river beach and is there another one to review the beach control act of 1956 or you don't start that one as it no we don't start that one but we have one in mommy bay and we also have one in Blue Lagoon. So, so Blue have, Lagoon, Mami Bay. So you have individual lawsuits for Blue Lagoon, Mami Bay, Little Duns River, and, Bob and Dr. Bay. Goff is the one and all of them. Dr. Goff is the champion lawyer that you know is taking on all of these fights. Um and right. so, so that's 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 where we are. You know, I mean, we are using the prescriptive act, which is you know, one piece of legislation. <laughs> and, and you know, this act is actually from 1882, you know, so it's also colonial in, in nature, but it was actually placed within the Beach Control Act as like a fail safe that, you know, if you feel that your rights have been um, violated, you can drop yes. this act. And it's actually the government is supposed to do this, you know. The government, um, you know, um, can re really solve the problem. In fact, the head of the Beach Control Act you know, is actually the Prime Minister of Jamaica, and it gives him a lot of power mm -hmm. that he can open up any new beaches across the country. He can actually mandate, you know, any kind of access anyone wants over land onto beaches. So wow. the, the, it, the, it, the, the, the head of this act is actually the king that can make all these things possible for the Jamaican people. And so, you know, I mean, while it's a bad legislation that, you know, I mm. mean, it puts power into the Too much power one in one person's person hand. Absolutely. It is a bad piece of legislation. We need to move away from that because, you know, in the era of environmentalism, right, where coastal spaces are very important, um, you know, to our, our survival, you know what I mean? We need to actually develop different relationship between um, how we use these spaces, right? So we need some better, strong environmental law around conservation, you know, mm. you know around the protection of biodiversity and mitigation of, of, of the impact of climate change, which is coming because, you know, um, everything is warming up, sea level is going to rise. And the way all the tourism product is, it's, it's extractive. You know what I mean? It really comes in and rip down the entire um, ecosystem and build these hotels, you know, right along the coast, right on the sea, right mm. there. And so that is just not good. You saw what they did in Green Island, in which they ripped the mangrove forest out. 
you know what I mean, yes. to accommodate the development of hotels. You know I mean, they're doing those things in Cooper's Bend. Um, you, that's just not the right way to go. And so while we understand, you know, tourism is important, um, you know, as an economic, um, you know, space within Jamaica, we have to do it differently. Yes. You know, we have to move away from the kind of model that we have. We have to move away the way and up as to how these hotels are built. You know, we have to create laws that requires that they not build so close to the shore. They have to be, you know, I mean, we're thinking a minimum of 100 feet above the high water mount. That's the wet sandy mm. area. So you mm. are on land, you know, um, so that you preserve these spaces because they are, they are important. You know, nature does have the right to exist. You know, man, sometimes coming at this thing, I feel, say, I'm a king of the planet and him come after the plants, them. And so we really need to make sure that we are doing the right thing by earth. Otherwise, you know, we are kind of like signing up our own demise. Mm. Jamaica, we have heard from Dr. Devon Taylor tonight, the advocate and the president of Jabi, speaking on the whole issue of having greater access to our beaches and recreational activities. I know Dr. Taylor has to leave us now because he needs to go back with his team to look at what is happening for tomorrow. If you can support them at Sutton Street, you can. What time is the case tomorrow at Sutton Street? The case starts at 10 o'clock. I mean, 11 o'clock, but would like the supporters to show up by 10. So, you know what I mean? Um, I'm sure so if you want to go and support them, you can go to Sutton Street tomorrow at 10 o'clock and be a part of the ongoing demonstration and gathering as they call for greater access to the beaches. Jamaica, 2.8% out of 494 miles is just too little bit. But thank you, Dr. Taylor. And you know, you're always welcome to join us and give us further updates as what's happening. All right? God yeah, bless you. Thanks. Okay. Yes, caller, welcome to the program. Yeah, Andre. Yes, my friend. Good night. Mm -hmm. You know, so me, me live close to the beach up on up um, the one of the youth that crossed down the river, see? Yes. But here's the problem with it now with the beach. And some people may not agree with me. At uh, one time, you, you used to go down here free and whatever, whatever. Them start charging to go down in there. Um, not a problem. But the problem with that beach there, when you walk on the beach, you have like 50 man on the like place, near Ganta's pizza, them, and you carry all your mind and them go there because it's small, you know, you don't have the big space. So you carry all the But it's a Rastafarian dwelling, so no, you... but, and they, they're not one down there, they're not one down there, so the public, them, they, you, you, when they go down there, you can't be, you, 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 you don't have the peace down there, brother. The man, them take beer, man, for all boats, Spanish town, everywhere you can think of. Crowd up down the pile of place, brother, may I tell you, say. Them, them need to look into that situation, the brother. Either what do you mean by crowd up down there? And if you walk, if you, if you go down there, walk on it. It's not a big, a big place. But if it's, it's not, not a big, big place, then at least give the people them the space and make them do what they do. If you don't want to make the, um, go down there, don't go down there. It's a public place down there for everybody in the community, everybody in Jamaica, it's a public place. Well, if them do what we back them need to adjust that something there, brother. Yeah, when you have kids that go to a public place, brother, everybody has smoke, brother, man. Them, them for go one side, man. Them look for my whole place, brother. Ah, oh, so you have a problem with them and them smoking? Me, me go down there, me, 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 it's going to be sometime, I'm going to say, Angie, you want to walk past, I'm going to say, God, I'm going to left to right, brother. You're going to go, be one side of this, I'm going to smoke. A public place to everybody. And I can't tell Angie, I'm going to go down there. Man, man, down the farm, but man, just don't go all day. I'm not talking about the hostage, I'm going to go to Guan. Man, man, crawl up down there, just crawl up down there, crawl up down there. I don't want a small place. It's not in my beach, you know. It's not even a beach, it's more like a put in a beach or the water around them after the hill I go down and walk apart and want to see. So you eat up it's up our boat on the hillside. It's not even a beach. Oh, so it's, it's a little place. It's a little place. It's not like a beach where you, you, you know you have sun and whatever. The water comes right up against the rock. Mm. So you don't really have a beach here or whatever. The water run off in the sea, like you know, if you understand me, so there's no really beach. Oh okay. really. But you but you can be here and you come and look at your own water around them, but them, 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 for no command, you must have equal rights and justice. Second, there is smoking, but I know good for nobody at all. The man, they have the respect when I go down there. Me, you live close to there, not what's me, they go down there regular. Me, I have to you know, have the man, them, they have a way down there. And them, man, for all about this, down there. Spanish town, this, that, be a madman. They fix that. Be a madman, what do you mean by be a madman? Madman, madman, just be a madman, madman, them parts of them back here. I mean, I'm not talking about a 
Rasta, the, and a Rasta may talk about. Mm. That's about regular youth and a Rasta may talk about. Regular man, the man that's down there, are very few Rasta down there. So I must say about, if six, seven Rasta down there, I won't eat that. I fear ballers may talk about. Ganja, Rasik, and Napa, and Pantong, and Basi, them need to fix that and them walk back down there. All right. Thank you for your contribution tonight. All, All right. right, brother. Cool. Yeah, man. Mm. Hello, good night. Welcome to the program. Yes, turn off the TV, please. No problem. My apologies, sir. Um, I just want to say I totally agree with the caller because there are times when I go there and I can't have no peace. Like there are lots of guys in the front always trying to charge you one little two three up to five hundred dollars when it's a free beach and i don't think that's right and mm. you know the ganja smoking yes it, it's very problematic at times especially when you go with children and family yes and group setting but the guys in the front they kind of make it a little bit really little Duns river sometimes. yes sir little oh. Duns river wow and it's, and it's a beautiful it's a beautiful place you know because like the gentleman said it it's a it's a small beach, so there's not really a lot of places to venture and go out oh. on the beach, you know. And we do enjoy the fresh water coupled with the sea water. Oh, so the know, fresh water and the sea water is what make it so nice. Yes, Andre, and I love it. I went there um a little bit before the incident happened, a few months before this incident happened yes. on the roadside. And I tried to and I had fun, but the, my pro, my main problem with mm. that beach is mm. the gentleman the, in the front. The man them, the weed man, it. them and the extortionist. Yes, because like for example, one man will come and say, I want like a five hundred for going in, or you give this man the five hundred. Yeah. And one next one will come and say, I want two and it's like I just give that one five hundred and now you want two hundred so I don't like that. So oh, too to much people too much man handling yes. now no. Yes, we need to be fair, but I do agree that we should have access to the beach and the government should open up the beach for the public to have access to the beach. All right, Carla, thank you yes, for sir. that. You're here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hello, welcome to the program, my student. Hey, good night, Andre. Yes, welcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to be honest now, the, 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 the beach you know, or, the, or the river or whatever it may be. Yes. Sometime, you know, sometime, you know. When we go there, we pay like all a little money. And whatever. We don't really have a problem. We don't really have a problem paying them the money. Yes. But sometimes when they have to pay the money, I have to make sure that they have somebody there, there who have a look after the people and see if it's because sometimes people them go to the beach and they can't swim in Andre. Mm. And they have to pay the money. They have to pay the money. Yes. They go swim. And there's no supervision over them. Oh, the lifeguard and them something there. Yes. So, yes. so if you have to charge the people, it's simple as this. Just Make sure it's a supervision did it. Yes. To guide the kids them and whatever. Because you see, you see the TNT when the people might are complaining more. Mm -hmm. They can't have a top that thing because any people have a hustle. Yes, they the hustling will go always happen. At all time, and the government now nah, do not pay people them. So the man them have a child find means and way out for a work or them thing. You understand? Yes, me? true. Yeah, and Andre, over the year, over the year, you come on and say, I'm a big up Kingston College for winning the boys and champs and heading all in for the girls. Oh, what is? Champs not gone already. Why you not leave yeah, me alone? Yeah, but when the year, you say, big up King, the greatest, the greatest. All right, congratulations to Kingston College for the 35th championship <laughs> and, the, and congratulations to Edwin Allen for the girls' 10th championship. You feel better now? Lord Jesus. All right. Mm. Hello, good night. Welcome. Hello, Andre. Yes, caller. Talk up. Talk up now. Yes, good night, Andre. Yes, what you saying, caller? Yes, on the, the, the thing about the beach. Mm -hmm. In center. In center. The government said that they uh, um, fix up the fisherman's beach for poor people uh -huh. so that people have better convenience. But, Andre, you know you can't even carry a bottle of water in there. Why? No, they say nothing. You're not supposed to carry anything from outside. No food, no drink, nothing. Which beach is that? Fisherman's Beach in Ultra Rios. I don't know about Fisherman Beach. Where is Fisherman Beach? Right. 
right beside the pier right beside the pier and they're saying you can't carry nothing in there there's a sign there that you can't take anything inside there because they build these expensive restaurants in there and you cannot poor people cannot carry anything in there that's a place that poor people go to that was a public beach well then and take it and turn it in a private beach now yeah all right mm. as of, as they did to Puerto Rico. Yeah, them get Kenny Andre, Benjamin Puerto Rico. Yeah, Andre, I'm over 60 years of age, and, and from I was a child, we used to go to, to Puerto Rico on, on holidays. Yes. Summer holidays. And we used to enjoy ourselves. No, we can't go there. You can't go there, Kenny we Benjamin, only it and him have days where Jamaicans now go up on the land. Yeah. All right. Thank you for your contribution. Mm. Okay. Yes, caller. Good night. You alone can call ten times for the night. You know, once you call no, one I time, you, have, you can't them. make you can't you have to give somebody else no, the I phone line. I don't want some to chat on chat chat. Mm. Chat chat. The narrative that must spread about Junius Wallace as a woman. You remember the Portia was a prime minister. How they shall treat her? Yes, I remember how they used to treat Portia. Okay, sir. All right. Mm -hmm. Tell them, tell them, don't listen narrative, the listen the message. All right, caller, bless you. Mm -hmm. yeah. That caller think they must call 15 times for the night. Hello, good night. Night, teacher. Yes, welcome to the program. Bless you. When you go in a Bahamas and Santa Domingo, mm -hmm. public people, regular people have access to the beaches. So we should have access to all the beaches in Jamaica, just to see. All right. Well, let us see if the law will be changed, the 1956 Public Speech Act. All right. So let us give the yeah. Rastas and this group, Jabim, some more strength so that they can fight off the wicked colonial system. All right, my friend? Reality. Yeah, all right. Man. Bless God bless you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. No. Yeah, man. Hello, welcome to the program. Hi, Mr. Stevens, how are you doing? I'm well, so welcome to the program. All right, calling from overseas, but I'm a local man. I'm just calling in regards to the whole matter of the funeral home. Yes. I think I've been watching the program, and I think we all have it all wrong. I think we need to get our facts. Get and what get wrong? Our facts, and we can speak. Get what wrong, sir? Well, I hear in all kinds of arguments about Archer's Funeral Home. Archer's Funeral Home has always done post-mortems. Most post-mortems are done in Spanish town, whether they come from Kingston, whether they come from Clarence, wherever they come from. Because so how recent Archer's Funeral Home get that contract? They have had that contract, I suspect, I, I believe personally, more than five years ago. More than five years and Archer's so them get it from 2018 so from that funeral home open them doing postmortems with the government yes that's where they do postmortems in spanish so why archer's funeral home was selected well i don't know as a matter of fact that because you have other funeral homes that have been existing so long and archer's funeral home no, is just five years old hold a second, mm -hmm. hold a second. other funeral homes do not do postmortem examination they don't do it. They have never done it. That spot where Archer is, they have always done it. It used to be Young's funeral home, and that is where they always do postmortem examination. Now there's a difference between pick up bodies. So if you when you do a postmortem at Archer's, you are free as a citizen to get your choice of funeral pile to come and collect your body. But the bodies have to be examined in one place. So I because want to ask you though, sir. Pathologies. I want to ask you though. Do you think that it's fear that a minister, counselor, is the one who has the contract to do the postmortems? Do you, do you think that is ethically correct? Well, let me ask, can I answer it this way? Archer has been doing examination at his place long before he ran as counselor. Should he now, should he now give up his business because he ran as a counselor? Then him shouldn't be a counselor. Him shouldn't be a counselor because it's, it, will be, it will be seen as an act of nepotism. No, if they 
is a breaking of the law of his own in a funeral parlor that does that friend that is you cannot be a government member that. and doing business with the government of jamaica it's wrong no it is no i don't i don't i don't want to oh, say spam me jesus you can't just get up and say it's wrong he has mm -hmm. always been in business so so, so, so me want to ask you though so you're saying to me andre stevens have a funeral woman tomorrow andre stevens is in government andre stevens must still no. do business with the government but that is not what is happening so what is happening? No, what is happening? Isn't this man a counselor? I want to ask you. Let me tell you what's happening. Isn't this man a counselor for the Jamaica Labour Party? Yes or no? This man, this man is a local government representative. For who? Local government for who? representative. For who? For who, my friend? It does what you mean for who? What you mean for who? Are you saying to me that you should give up? They should no longer do postmortem at his place. No, it should not because it's a, it is seen as an act of nepotism. So, so what you need to so say what you're saying then? This man should not. No, no, no. Follow me. What you need to say then is that this man probably should not have gone into representation. No, he should not. He should not. But it can't be. It can't be that the government is going to take away from his place where all postmortems are done. Because so here is what here is what I want to say to you: Is Adam going to continue the funeral own business or give up the councillor business? That is a conflict no, 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 of. No, no, no. Him you cannot be doing call. the two. Him I cannot be doing the two. Can make that call. No, you can't make that call. If there is a conflict or a breach of any procedure, or any law, I'm not going to stop. I go, I'm call. not going to stop talking about it because that is no, friend and company business. No. Friend and company, company business, caller. He was there, but he was there long before he went into Christofton's constituency. Years he has been doing. Post what is post years? Me have one like said so the man that have 10, 15, 20 years. The company is a young company. <laughs> Then how do you mean the company is a young company? That particular place on Young Street in Spanish Town is where postmortems were always done before me. Sir, have you, did you, did you, sir? I want to ask you a question. Did you look mm -hmm. into when the company was formed? I saw on your page 2018, but that is beyond the point. So what? Oh, it must be on the when point, my friend. In, because in 2018, when Archer had his funeral home set up. He had no inkling at all that he was going to be a counselor under any party whatsoever. Oh, I'm what saying is? that he should now he should now remove the, his place, should now no longer be used for postmodern examination. As a matter of fact, Morgan, Robert, and all of them, they have never done postmodern examinations at those locations. Never. Sir, you know what you know what I'm going to say to you, my friend. You know what I'm going to say to you? That's why Jamaica is in a bad place. Because we don't see the unethical circumstance on which I'm standing I on. No, I it, it, it is. I am going to say to you, my friend. I'm going to say to you. I'm going to ask you for the best practice. Yes. I want to say to you, President Biden is president of the United States. But a friend of his has a funeral business, right? And then the friend, no, I want to put it to you, man. The friend turn around and is now a, 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 a congressman. Do you think that that is ethically correct? Friend, no, it is it's on the, the issues of morality and ethics. No, which morality? What morality? The man has a business at his place. I not say nothing more to you, Mr. Archer, your friend. Everybody, look like Mr. Archer, your friend. You see, and that's how you stay with the like two people when people have a difference of opinion. All right, sir. Thank you. I not say nothing more to you. You, Andre, you must learn to hear other people's points. And your, I've heard your point. I've heard your point, and I will say to you, I leave you to, I leave you to time. You know, say that is tough time. Where tough time comes from, one, 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 one. You hear I said that? Where, where over here you say I said that? That is, that, that is what that you, that's what people the call your program to chat foolishness about tough time one in one in place. The man not Sir, where on my program here I said tough time one. You say I would have done the research when I did the research. Sir, leave the people them alone to them opinion. It's people like you where Jamaica mash up. Good night. Because you must not, you must not.
come you you, you want all them go on i got to be called the man did that do business how long him 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 yes you him stir up ants nest tonight hello good night and how are you i'm good i think what i'll say is that previous caller i think we had a similar situation in the uk when it came to the pandemic mm -hmm. where the government used government ministers from the house of lords and from different parts of government to get the ppe um and gave contracts to their friends which was found by the uk um like our version of the integrity commission yes. to be unlawful and to be nepotism you cannot have friends in government with public money it's not private money it's public money that's earned through taxes and through other um ventures that the government may invest True. in you can't, you can't have that as a councillor especially when you do local government which i'm an expert in he's got to declare his interests yes he can still have a business because there's many politicians that have their business but he has to declare his interest in what he's doing and True. with what has happened he's it's wrong and it needs to be called out and what's going on in jamaica cannot happen on the international stage and if it does it's nipped into the bud very quickly because the people alone start protesting and start talking about unfairness but nepotism is rooted within government and it's not just a jamaica issue it's a worldwide international yes. global issue but it's what we do as the people and it's what the government does because sometimes organizations do not declare for example rishi sunak our prime minister is the richest man in the uk is richer than the king his wife has um child care businesses and things like that that she invests in he had to declare it and there was public conversation about it because there was there was it was said that her businesses got funding from the government mm. they had to declare their taxes so the thing is you can't just have a government business i'm not saying you must shut it down but you can't have a business and your gut and your government that he's you a director in. in the business it's not like he's a shareholder he's a director exactly and um, i just want to say to the caller if it was mark golding or a, or a, or a pmp councillor it wouldn't be happening they would be going to the integrity commission true it has to be fair it has to be fair across both sides even the labor party over here it has to be on both sides and he's wrong all and right even, man all right he needs to leave all, all right, right joshua mm -hmm. yeah. hello good night um i want to make a disclosure that in nowhere in the world is there perfect government and the TV, what God. we need to do as a people andre yes i'm hearing you yeah what we need to do as a people is when you find corruption you need to root it out you need to cut it out like a bad cancer. Mm. You understand? You cannot. Andre, remember when Trump got, um, became president? Yes. He had to cut ties with his businesses and yes. towers and all of these things? Yes. So why is it that in Jamaica it cannot be the same? When Jamaicans migrate to what Jamaicans, Thank when you're talking you. about ethicalness, mm -hmm. and in Jamaica, when you say we need to be ethical, Jamaicans say no. Your bad mind but when you move abroad england canada us wherever else and you find corruption you said no that's unethical so why you can't hold up your own country to those same standards mm. we as a people are helping the government stifle the country and the green people need to go all right my dear thank you thank you hello good night you know this man really um stir me up tonight him really stir me up to know that this is a blatant act of nepotism. And rather than we call it out, you're going to say that the man was there before him turned counselor. So should the man stop his business? He must remove himself as a director of the company, Courtney. Tell me if he's lying, me I tell. True. I'll stop their counselor. If done, I, yeah, stop their counselor. Choose one. But you cannot benefit from two, two, two sides. That's why you are get you are get taxpayers' money as councillor, and then you are get contract from government for funeral home. And we not fit about it because you did that years ago. How much years ago? Yes, I went overcome. I say yes, overcome. Yes, about Monday, Andre. Yes. I've been telling a long time. Yes, the labor right people. Yes. Because I'm on that street, labor right, you know. 
them don't know wrong from right. What, what me, what, what the man not understand is, it's not like that the man have been funeral home long time. He can't be funeral home from before my born. But it's the fact, the problem of people are saying, them body has to go to that man. So they not get the choice to choose to over suicide a body, coral, RJB. It's, it's the hospital send the body them directly to that man. So it is costing the people them more. They're not cheap to bury them. Mm. But over here, so when you're when you're dead, dead, the hospital asks you, so look like what do you mean when a Jamaica? When scene of crime people come. Yes. Then on the tranquility, I feel there are suspicious um circumstances. Mm. Tranquility, no matter which point of Jamaica you're there, a tranquility have to come pick up your body. Yes. You don't have tranquility are the same the same about your name. No, 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 no. Different company. But, so so what I mean what I mean to say is when you're dead under certain circumstances like sudden death, you're dead out in your property, you get gunshot or so a tranquility mm. comes to you. You understand? So, me can understand that. But when you're there under normal circumstances as a maker, and you forget your funeral home, so I must something fishy with the hospitals where they appear. Me can remember saying, you know, in the hospitals where they make, you know, yeah. them, 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 them get money from the funeral home, them too, you know, the nurses, them, you know. Them get money from whichever funeral home. Them, them refer to, you too, yes. Mm. Yes, that's how it goes. So, Jamaica now see, but I'm saying to you, Andre, Jamaicans don't know right from wrong, most of them. And all of them know right from wrong, and labor right. Because this is not right. It can't right it, over it can't be right. It can't, it right. can't be right. And you can't try to put you up that. But I'm not going to run from me before me born or from the goes of boy. It's just not right. You understand? True, and true. Before, so it, the bad part of it is, you should know that the people have no, have no choice to choose tranquility. Our bones and whoever is nearer to them, you know, get the first mm. time. Why the body, the man, and I are suspicious body. Come in when I tell me, I'm going to a suspicious body, they go to a particular funeral home. So I have some scam in original ship. Me have none can go so. Me have the Amish ship. Can none can go so. As I said last night, we have a right can't be a tenth of. Then can't be a yes, then they have a chance of. Not no go so. Me not believe. All right. All right, my boy. No, no, no. God bless All you. Right. Mm. Hello, caller. Welcome. Hi, good night, um, Andre. Yes. Um, sometimes you know, some of those people that, that incident to that brother is like um the leader, the speaker of the house covering up our chuck. Mm. It's the same thing that the same thing that man come to the other ago. Cover up his chuck and tr try to justify. An unjustified situation. Oh yes. And and and, and it, it, it's I ain't know what happened with it too. When them rang them strong with it too, is man. Then I have that, no that, little thing about them for just cool down and reason. No, them I, come I, I, off I, I, strong I, like a cup of coffee. Exactly. As if as if as if he's in the. What if he was if he, if he I'm sixty four, and if he was even doing business before I was born. Yes. Once you become, once you become the part of the government, you are not supposed to have no cunt or you remove yourself from the business. Because that coming like Andrew Olness is no prime minister and him still him get contract with government. That would be the part, is it? After it must be not nepotism. So, and so what well, I mean if a member of parliament versus that, that is act of nepotism. You can't, you can't be getting taxpayers money as your peer and still getting taxpayers money from contract well, i go and upon this one some more all right uh, okay then yeah man uh, jamaica that's where i go and leave this program for tonight tomorrow night i'm going to extend the phone lines for you to talk about it i'm going to spend some more time on this funeral matter to stir up some answers in this country because if i don't stir up the answers the answer juliet wellness I come in after you tomorrow. You know? I come in after you tomorrow. You think the woman upper upper in a east rural where my shop all and me now go take on it. Tomorrow night me I go take on the matter with Juliet Wallace and upper east rural. Who are them wicked in her? But she had the, the coffee farmer up there how much years. And she sent bulldozer up there. So I go be that I must see a apartment, but she go build football field. Jamaica, I want to go and stir them up some more tomorrow night. My name is Andre Stevens.
And this is on the Andre Stevens Show. Until tomorrow night, thanks all for your super chat, the Zell and the Cash App. I have Cash App and I have Zell. Call me. Send me a WhatsApp and I will send you the information. Remember, I have a nice steam fish this weekend with my friend Courtney. I'm celebrating birthday. Come in and go dance. Courtney, I'm going to dance and I say, you have to go find a different way to celebrate with me. All right? But God bless you, Jamaica. My name is Andre Stevens, and this was the Andre Stevens Show. Good night.